You are Marty McFly, just a typical senior at Hill Valley High. But after getting behind the wheel of a nuclear-powered sports car turned time machine, you find yourself in the year 1955, where you've accidentally tampered with history. Now it must be corrected. You must somehow make sure that teenagers Lorraine Baines and George McFly, the two kids that will eventually grow up to become your parents, fall in love before the photo of your family fades away and you're left with nothing to come home to. It won't be easy. You'll have to protect George from Biff and his gang of bullies while doing your best to keep them from beating you up instead. To complicate things, Lorraine has a crush on you, so you'll have to dodge her advances while trying to figure out a way to get George and her to kiss at the school dance. Time is wasting, and even if you manage to put all of the pieces in place, there's still no guarantee that you'll get back. It will all come down to one brief moment in time, when the past, present, and future all meet. If you haven't figured it out, this is Back to the Future from LJN in 1989. Uh, I'm not a Back to the Future fan of yours. Not at all. Not of the movies, not of the games. Didn't like it. Sorry, Christopher Lloyd. I like you. Didn't like these movies. Um, so, based loosely on the 1985 film of the same name, LJN was also responsible for the sequel Back to the Future Part 2 II and 3. In the single mode game, we control Marty McFly through various stages set in 1955, in which he collects various clock icons in order to advance to the le next level and avoid the gradual vanishing of his future, indicated by a fading photograph at the bottom of the screen. If the photograph fades fully, Marty would lose a life, as it would show him vanishing. Collecting 100 clocks restores the photograph to its full unfaded status. Two power-ups can help improve Marty's control, bowling balls that can destroy enemies, and a skateboard which can speed up gameplay. There are also three mini-games at the end of each stage, featuring some such scenarios as Marty repelling Biff Tannen's gang of bullies from a cafe, blocking all the kisses Lorraine sends Marty in the shape of little hearts, and having to position his guitar properly to stay in tune with the dance in order for George and Lorraine to kiss. The game on these stages is often compared to that of Paperboy. In the final stage, we get to control the DeLorean time machine on the street at night, dodging lightning bolts and obstacles while accelerating in such ways to reach 88 miles per hour, precisely at the end of the stage, enabling the time machine to bring Marty home to 1985. The game only contains two songs from the film. One is a sped-up version of The Power of Love, which plays through most of the game. The other is Johnny Be Good, which plays in the guitar level. If Marty loses all his lives, players shown at the game over screen reading, Tough luck, Marty. Looks like you're stuck here. The player is also presented with a message if Marty fails to get the DeLorean to 88 miles an hour by the time he reaches the wires, regardless of how many lives he has left. Unlike the movie, the game adaptation of Back to the Future was almost universally panned. Bob Gale, screenwriter of the films, has called the NES game one of the worst games ever, and even insisted in interviews that fans should not buy it. According to Gale, LJN refused his request to give input while the game was being developed. Once he was shown the game, he asked him to make changes, but told it was too late in the process to change anything. NESplayer.com called it another one of LGN's games that were produced for the sole reason of cashing in on a movie. Yeah, I don't like this game. I don't know anybody that likes this game. I don't like this movie. I know a lot of people who like the movie. This is a perfect example of exactly what uh, NESplayer.com called it. LGN just making money off of a movie. Sometimes it's forgivable. Um, most of the time, it's not. What like Jaws, I'm. I enjoyed Jaws. I thought Jaws was fun. Um, this is not so much. I I cannot. Uh, what's the dude's name? Bob Gale. Bob's right. Avoid it. Don't buy it. Don't play it. Just let it fade off into history. <laughs>